This video is on graphing simple and compound inequalities on a number line. Number one, the age you cannot drive. Well, in Alabama, you cannot drive legally without a parent or guardian if you're under the age of 16. So we would use a variable for the age at which we cannot drive. You could use A for age. I like the variable N. And the age we cannot drive is less than 16. So this is my inequality. N, the age I can drive or the age I can't drive, is less than 16. Now, in textbooks and on tests, they like to do this. They say N such that N is less than 16 with these fancy brackets on each side. I believe they're called ellipses. Don't let that bother you. Just know if you see that, it says n such that n is less than 16, but all you have to worry about is n less than 16. When we graph it on a number line, the number line technically goes to infinity positive to the right to infinity negative to the left. If we do a full number line, and I'll show you shortcuts later, but if we do a full number line, the number I'm graphing I can put in the middle. I can put a couple numbers to the right couple of numbers to the left. 16 is the number I found. By the way, if it said n equals 16, I would fill in that dot and I would be done. However, it's n less than 16. It does not include that 16, so the circle has to be open, but it does include everything to the left of 16. So I'm going to color in everything to the left of 16, which means less than 16. And when I see open circle to the left, that means less than. It does not include the 16. It only includes all the numbers less than 16. And if I wanted to be technical, I would not do a arrow here. I would stop it at zero because you can't be a negative age. But we won't worry about that on this one. Number one was the age you cannot drive. Number two is the age you can drive. You cannot drive if you are less than 16. You can drive if you are equal to 16 or greater than 16. So we use the inequality symbol greater than or equal to. The age I can drive can be greater than 16 or it can be equal to 16. This says n such that n is greater than or equal to 16. So again, we find a 16 on the number line. This time it includes the 16, so we do color it in. And by the way, this right now, if I leave it like it is, says N equals 16. So the age you get your driver's license, we could put N equals 16. But the age you can drive can be 16 or any number greater than 16. So my arrow would go to the right on this one. Age you can drive, N, the age you can drive is greater than or equal to 16. Greater than means arrow to the right or equal to means code insert. Here we have an inequality without a word problem part to it. I just wanted you to see one with a negative number. So when I do my number line to the left, it's a little different with negative numbers would be negative 23 is smaller, negative 24 is even smaller, negative 21 is greater, negative 20 is even greater. This says n such that n is less than or equal to negative 22. So it does or equal to it, so it's closed circle, and it's less than, so my arrow would go to the left. And we have graphed n such that n is less than or equal to negative 22. Those were simple inequalities. Now let's look at a compound inequality. On example A, all seventh grade test scores range from 27 to 108, meaning my lowest score was 27, my high score was 108. So I'm going to use the variable n to represent my test scores. The smallest score was 27, the largest score was 108. n, the score, was greater than or equal to 27. There was some equal to 27 and several greater than 27. And 
the test scores were less than or equal to 108. This N represents my test scores, greater than or equal to 27 and less than or equal to 108. So on a number line, we need to find the 27 and the 108. My lowest score goes on the left, 27. My high score goes on the right, 108. There was a score of 27. There was a score of 108. And there were scores in between. So I would have a solid line going from 27 to 108. Without looking at that, we should be able to look at this graph and know, okay, the graphed part we'll call N is greater than or equal to 27 and it's less than or equal to 108. Let's look at example B. In order to be an effective pitcher, your changeup needs to be less than 60 miles per hour and your fastball should be more than 80 miles per hour. Anything in between is called a meatball. So in the speed that you pitch should be less than 60 or it should be greater than 80. So let's look at this on the number line. Let's find the 60 which is my small number, the 80 which is my larger. It doesn't say it should be 60 or less, it says less than 60. So that's going to be open circle to the left and it says it should be greater than 80 not greater than or equal to not at least 80 but greater than 80 or more than 80 and there's what the graph of that one looks like When you have a and where the variable is between two numbers and you're going in between, that's called an and. And when the variables go opposite directions, it's called an or. Less than 60 or greater than 80. It's like oars on a boat. If this were a boat in the middle and you have the oars on both sides that you're paddling with, that helps you remember what's an or. So again, this compound inequality says and is greater than or equal to 27 and less than or equal to 108. This one says N is less than 60 or greater than 80. In number uh, letter C, N is equal to five. Just remember, equal to is just a simple dot. Equal to five, dot over the five. Number four says the speed you can drive on the interstate. Well, the speed you can drive, represented by N, can be, let me think about this, the, the, the biggest speed you can drive is 70, and the smallest is 45, so the speed you can drive can be greater than or equal to 45, less than or equal to 70. The speed you can drive is greater than or equal to 45, and less than or equal to 70. So, my lower end goes on the left, my higher end goes on the right. These are or equal to, so these are going to be closed circles. And it's between the two numbers, it's between the 45 and the 70. So I'm gonna graph everything in between the 45 and the 70. Number five says, temperature at which water does not freeze or boil. So it does freeze at 32 or below. It does boil at 212 and above Fahrenheit. So I can go ahead and find those two spots. All right, it does freeze at 32 and below. So I would do closed circle to the left if it asks where does it freeze, but it says where does it not freeze. So we're gonna to go to the right of that. If it says where does water boil, it would be closed circle to the right because it's 212 and above. But it says where does it not boil? Where does it not freeze? Where does it not boil? So I'm going to go to the left of that one. And then when we connect the two, in 
the, the temperature at which water does not freeze or boil is greater than 32 and less than 212. I could have written main equality first. N is less than 212. It's greater than 32. The mouth opens to the bigger, so N is bigger than 32. 32, it points to the smaller. 32 is less than N. Now, technically, one could say 32 is less than N is less than 212, but the way you should say it is say N first. N, the answer to our question, temperature at which water does not freeze or boil, N is greater than 32 and less than 212. Number six is the speed you cannot drive on the interstate. Earlier, we said you can drive from 45 to 70. So you cannot drive at less than 45 miles per hour. And you cannot drive at greater than 70 miles per hour. Put a comma, I could put an or. 45 is my smaller, 70 is my larger, okay. At 45 is okay, but less than 45 is not okay. So it's gonna be open circle to the left. At 70 is okay, but greater than 70 is not okay. So it's gonna be open circle to the right. Let me color in my arrows really quick. So open circle to the left for 45, open circle to the right for 70. Now, without seeing this sentence and without looking at these inequalities, I should be able to look at this graph only and say, okay, this graph says less than or equal to, I mean, I'm sorry, it says less than 45 or greater than 70. The speed at which you cannot drive an interstate is less than 45 or greater than 70. When they go opposite of each other, it's or like oars on a boat. We'll do three more really quick. So on this one, negative one and two is what I'm graphing. I could go ahead and fill out the whole number line since these numbers are closer together. N is less than negative one. So that's gonna be open circle to the left. N is greater than two. So that's gonna be open circle to the right. And we have an or. So if I wanted to, I could write the word or between those. N is less than negative one or greater than two. On well, number eight, assuming my inequality symbols are in the right, pointed the right way, I instantly know I have an N. Now, if these symbols were flipped around, then this is written wrong. I'd have to make sure. But it appears I'm graphing everything bigger than or equal to one and everything less than three. So that's three, two, one, zero, negative one. I need the one, I need the three. The one is closed in because it's everything or equal to one. And it says greater than or equal to one. So it's gonna to be to the right of the one. Less than three, that's gonna to be to the left of the three. And these will connect and give you an and statement. And what we're graphing is greater than or equal to one greater than or equal to one and less than three. Number nine, one, two, and I'll go ahead and fill in the three, zero and negative one. We find the one and the two, which is what we're graphing. N is greater than one. So it's open circle to the right. N is less than two, that's open circle to the left. And they're going to connect like this. And that says N is greater than, I graphed that wrong, completely wrong. Okay, so what I just graphed says N is greater than one and less than two. That goes together. This one, let me try it again. And this, I meant to confuse you and I ended up confusing myself. So we have the one, we have the two. N is less than one, so open circle to the left over the one. N is less than two, open circle to the left over the two. 
Now, if it's less than two, one is less than two. So it's going to end up covering up that open circle. And you're going to have a graph like this. Really, all they had to do is put n is less than two, because if it's less than two, obviously, it's also less than one. And here's your graph of that one. So again, worked out good, because we got to see one where it's n is greater than one and less than two. But because that symbol was flipped, n is less than two. It's also less than one. They end up being one graph, and that part was not needed. It was just put there to confuse us. Thank you.